Hello, welcome to the August edition of Extra. I'm Joanne Hines, and I'm glad to be back. And I'm Georgia Lash. It is good to be back here at Extra. As always, we work to bring you expanded coverage of recently broadcast features from Sun City News. So Joanne, what kept you busy these last three months? Well, I organized my closets and the garage, and I binge-watched Netflix <laughs> like crazy. And I became an artist by Paint by Number, uh, gifted by my niece. And our executive producer, George Rosehart, created a vignette of what the last three months looked like for most of us. See if you can relate. Ah, the past few months. What have I been doing to occupy my time? Playing games on my iPhone. Walking to keep active. Card games. Searching for a movie on Prime. Playing solitaire. Riding my bike. More computer games. Oh, those jigsaw puzzles. Catching up in email. Facebook. Instagram. Walking the same paths. Oh, more games. Watching a streaming series in one day. More bike riding. Talking with my sister. More walking. More games. More time alone. The days go on hour by hour. That looked familiar. A saving grace was getting outdoors. For many of our neighbors, biking became a favorite activity. Sun City, of course, has a bike club. Our sports reporter, Courtney Guthrie, got an update from the president of that popular organization, David Hurt. Hi, I'm here with David Hurt, the president of the Sun City Bicycling Club. And I was wondering, what has everyone been up to in your clubs for, during the lockdown? Well, obviously, like everybody else in Sun City, we haven't been having any meetings. However, we have been sending out our ride schedules so that people will continue to ride. And uh, we have four different groups of riders. We go from what they call the A group, which is extremely fast, to a D group, which is the lowest ride. And we cater to that person in the group that is the slowest speed. And normally that group only goes about 10 or 12 miles. We used to go to the clubhouse for breakfast after that. Uh, recently, outside the gate, um, the corner perk is opened up, so now our ride ends up at the corner perk. That's a nice ending. Yes. So do you have plans for the future? Are there any competitions for riders if they're interested? This year, the competitions all over were canceled. I personally like to do what they call the assault on Mount Mitchell. It's 102.7 miles. It is 11,000 feet of climb. It, the last 27 miles is the worst day of your life because Mount Mitchell is 6,684 feet above sea level. Takes you as long to do the 20, 27 and a half miles as it did the first 75 miles. But uh, yeah, they've canceled most of those events, uh, such as the Tour de France. It didn't happen this year. You get to see last year's. So we have our own events that we've had. We've had a small Spanish moss trail ride that we just recently have done. And as I said, our A group, B group, C groups, we're continuing to go out. We try to make the destination rides so that afterwards we can go someplace and congregate, tell stories about how fast we went, and uh, just have a good time. Now, if I was wanting to become a member, how would I get in touch to make that happen? You could call our uh, person, Paul Alexander. He is our uh, director of signing people up. He is in the uh, Sensations in the back under cycling, the bicycle club. And he'd be more than glad to take your $10. And that $10, by the way, anytime we do a group ride, we have supplemental insurance, which means in the event, and we always say that there are 
two kinds of bike riders, those that have been down and those that are probably going to go down. But that being said, if you do get injured on a bike ride and you are riding with a group of us, which means two or more, and it's a sanctioned ride, that the supplemental insurance will take over so it helps you with those expenses that you may incur. So you get a lot more than just uh, $10 worth of being in the club. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Now, do you have any safety advice for me as a cyclist that's brand new to the sport? Well, I don't think it's brand new, but it's been I'm ongoing. Okay. You're brand new right. to the sport, so yes. <laughs> Cycling to us, especially you know, to the club members, and we try to teach this as much as possible. The bike itself should actually fit you. You shouldn't fit the bicycle. To give you an example, this is a high-end bike, and of course, like I said, I ride a lot, often. I've been doing this since 1968, so till now. And my bikes have become more expensive, but the one thing that stayed constant is I've still got to pedal it. So, but the fit of the bike is extremely important. The level of the seat, the pedal stroke as far as for your legs going down. So when you do a proper exercise, you want to go from what they call your hip flexors all the way down to your feet and setting the bike up so that it fits you is extremely important. And it doesn't make a difference whether a bike like this that could cost up to $8,000 or a bicycle such as yours over here, which was probably not as expensive as that, should fit you properly. If it does, you'll ride longer and more comfortable. Can't say that your seat, sit bones won't hurt if you ride a long distance no matter what, but you will ride more comfortably if the bike is set up for you. Now what if I'm scared about riding out on the roads and getting hit by a car? Well, Sun City is great. We have trails in this community. That means what you may think is a sidewalk is actually a trail. We are allowed on those trails to ride. You must give the pedestrians the right of way. That's an absolute. People with dogs have to give the riders and pedestrian the right of way. Because if they tangle up in somebody or tangle up in a bike, they can cause an incident and then they become the responsible person. However, when it comes to us and pedestrians, we the cyclists have to give way, and we do. We're very con conscious about that. In the event that you like riding on the road, which I prefer myself, then I follow all the safety signs just as what you see on that shirt. We live in what they call a road share state. Okay, road sharing means that we have to share, or I should say that the cars have to share the road with us as we are with them and be respectful. What that means is if you'll look at the law, it says we should ride as close or as safely to the right as we can. For us as cyclists, safely means the right tire track of a car going down the road. And the reason for that is not all car people are respectful of our rights. So therefore, we have to have what we call a bailout measure, which means if I'm riding in that right tire lane, if somebody tries to cut me off, I then have the ability to go further to the right without causing myself injury. So you look at it that way. And it is a law in the state as well as it is a part of the community itself. In some states, and even in some communities in South Carolina, there's a three-foot law, which means that you have to give the cyclist at least three feet. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of great information. Like, we could even do a whole other chapter on this. Thank you so much for your time. You're so welcome. I was really glad to do this. I'm Courtney Guthrie from Sun City Television. Wow, they are an ambitious group. Now, Joanne, while it's been nice being outside, it's nice to also enjoy some of our Sun City indoor activities. Cue us in, Joanne. President Nick Pavich of the Sun City Billiards Club shares how we can get access to the tables. Okay. I'm Courtney Guthrie, and I'm here with Nick Pavlik, the president of the Billiards Club in Sun City. So tell me, what was the Billiards Club doing pre-COVID outbreak? Okay, pre-COVID outbreak, we played tournaments um, almost every night to club mem for club members. Uh, but we have eight ball certain nights, we have nine ball, and we have also separate big tournaments where the whole club is invited to play um, against each other. And then we play another group called Sun City Carolina Lakes from the other Sun City up in Carolina Lakes 
twice a year. We get together with the 12 and 12 member teams and we uh, have competition. And it's a lot of fun. So tell me, how has it been since the COVID has broke out for your members? Okay, so we're basically, there's hardly anybody shooting pool anymore. Uh, we have a time frame set up where you can sign up online and have two hours to yourself or with another person. Um, even though we started off with a lot asking for 12 people maximum per room, that became a, a problem with the uh, virus spreading. So we cut it down to six people can be in this room at one time. That's it. Anybody else has to wait outside. You can have the table for two hours. We taped off three tables, as you can see. Even with that, even with having, we have three tables open right now, there's still nobody playing pool. In the morning, we might get six people in the span of, we open from eight to maybe 12. In the afternoon, there's hardly anybody playing pool anymore. Everybody's afraid. That's the bottom line. That's unfortunate. Now, are there plans for the future of the, the billiards club that you want to bring up and tell to people about? We really are just playing it day by day. We have no other plans. We, we've cut down so radically. What we've done is we've asked, I've asked people to give us their feedback on what, how we could get you to come back again and play. And I have fr a lot of friends with the club, ladies and men, and they were all of the impression that they shouldn't be playing. Um, as far as I know, they're afraid of, you know, getting the virus, and I don't blame them. So everybody has to make their own decision on that. And, of course, there is the mask rule here as well. Right. The mask rule is in, is in effect here. Uh, if there's no matter how many people are in here, but if we have people that come in and play one by themselves, and if they want to wear a mask, that's up to them. But, you know, there's nobody else to give it to or get it from, so I don't know why they would, but... It's just nobody playing pool. You can see right now, there, there are two open tables, and it's 3 o'clock, and there's nobody here. This is almost every day, just like this now. Well, that's unfortunate. But in the future, you see more competitions and more openings for people after the COVID is gone? Well, after the COVID is gone, we go back to where we were. I mean, we used to get Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon, Sunday couples, we would get anywhere from 30 to 40 people on, and during those uh, 6 to 9 p.m. slots playing pool. Well, you hear that, everyone. If you want to come play pool and you're not afraid to put on a mask and enjoy the table, they're open and they're ready for you. Thank you so much for your time, Nick. I'm Courtney Guthrie for Sun City Television. So whether you say you shoot pool or play billiards, it looks like fun. Yeah, I know some people use the time off to try new things, Georgia. You had a chance to check out a new experience. I knew enough about the dance form clogging to know it's very energetic. My visit with the Sun City Cloggers was also informative and entertaining. Did you know that the official state dance for Kentucky and North Carolina is clogging? To learn a little bit more about this energizing and entertaining form of dance, we're closer to home with our own Sun City Cloggers. Norma, tell us about the Sun City Cloggers. The Sun City Cloggers, we started about 18 years ago, and there was one of our members who wanted to learn. He saw clogging somewhere, and he decided he wanted to learn how to clog. So he looked it up, and he found that there was a group in Savannah called the Home Cooking Cloggers, and Claudia Collier was their leader. And so we went there. There was a group of us that went there, and we learned how to clog, and we were there for probably over 10, 10, 12 years. And then she came here, and she didn't want to stay. She was here for about three months, and she didn't want to stay, so then I started teaching the cloggers. And we have about uh, 50 members now. What does it take to join your group? It doesn't really take anything. After the club fair in October, we always start a new beginning class, and it doesn't take anything. You just come, and if you like it well enough, usually we have shoes that we can let you try on, and then if you really like it, then you'll buy a pair of shoes, which are pretty pricey. Clogging shoes are about $60. When do you meet? 
We meet on Tuesday and Friday, every Tuesday and Friday, usually in the green room, but right now we're meeting in Pinckney till September. Saw your performance on YouTube at Bloom. Are you planning on any other performances? All right, so uh, we dance for, we, used, we dance at all the nursing homes on the island, Ridgeland and Hilton Head. And uh, we dance uh, for the kids at Agape, that's kind of on, on the way to Savannah, and uh, the kids in Ridgeland. And we used to dance on Tybee Island for a summer camp for the kids. And we used to do the Bluffton Festival all the time. And then lately we haven't, we just haven't been doing that. What are other plans that you've had? Well, we always do uh, Rainbow Rhythm, which is always every October, I mean every April, which is right here in Sun City. All the dance clubs perform, and we usually have two or three clogging groups that dance too. Alice, what's the origin of clogging? Well, I believe that it started in the Appalachian Mountains with um, the immigrants that had come into the country years and years ago, of course, hundreds of years ago. They started this type of dancing that they brought with them from the European countries and some also from Africa. I read this on, um, on the, two, on the uh, internet, of course. <laughs> and we've evolved from there. I mean, you know, what we, the way we dance now really is much, much different than how it started back in, you know, when it first was. Norma, did your group have a chance to stay active during the um, shutdown? So what we've been doing since uh, the shutdown in March, well, first we were having Zoom meetings with the whole group, and we would kind of play games, so that was kind of fun seeing everybody because we hadn't seen anybody for a couple months. And then we had some meetings at Lake Somerset. We just did like 10 people at a time so that we were far enough apart, and we had quite a few of those meetings. And then we would meet with just four people in my garage, and then we would take videos. I would take the video and call the dance and we'd have a couple girls dancing and then we put it on YouTube. And so we had the YouTube tapes for the girls to watch. And then we started dancing at uh, Hidden Cypress in the parking lot. And we would stay, you know, there were about maybe 12 or 15 and we'd always stay about six, six feet apart. But then we, so we did that for two, three weeks until now Pinckney has opened up and we're here, so. What's the difference between clogging and tapping? Well, um, and clogging, you're flat-footed, basically. You, you're, you're down closer to the ground, and you're uh, just making, it's a, it's a louder, uh, more percussive sound, I think, than the tap. The tapping, basically, they're up on their toes a lot. It's a little more smooth, I think, less, less of a country feel and more of a jazz feel is how I would describe it. And this looks like it's a very good exercise. Do you have any idea how many calories you burn while clogging? Well, somebody told me that you can burn 400 calories if you clog for an hour, but of course we don't consistently clog for an hour, but still I'm sure we're burning calories. And it's, you know, it's quite aerobic it can be, but also I always say it's good for your brain because you have to get the steps from your head down to your toes. So it's just a good overall exercise. 400 calories an hour? Now that's a reason to try clogging, besides having fun, of course. Now one thing we know about our Sun City neighbors is they stayed busy with volunteering. And we recently learned about a new opportunity to share our time and talent. Tell us about it, Joanne. News anchor Norma Taylor met with two mentors of the SCORE nonprofit organization. Well, welcome both to Sun City TV. Thank you very much. Thank you, glad to be here. Well, Paul, give us a short intro on to what exactly is SCORE, and specifically, our Low Country chapter. Sure. So in uh, 1964, SCORE as a national organization was founded. Um, uh, we, were, uh, we were originally uh, uh, tasked by the Small Business Administration, and the mission is to uh, help form and launch and manage small businesses. So we mentor uh, small business owners through all of the, uh, the aspects. There are over 300 chapters um, in, the, in the country, um, over 11,000 uh, volunteers. Uh, the Low Country Score uh, chapter was founded in 1989, uh, and uh, currently we have 40 uh, volunteers. 
Um, and uh, last year we, uh, we helped launch over 80 businesses. Extremely impressive, very impressive. And Karen, how has SCORD helped the small businesses during this COVID pandemic? Yeah, this has been a really difficult time, as you can imagine, for small businesses. Uh, when we saw the world going sideways, in, I guess it was around March, we collectively, internally said, you know what, there's going to be a lot of people needing help. And particularly now with the SBA loans, the PPP loans, Paycheck Protection Program, and the IDA loans, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, so what we asked is among the 40 mentors, who'd be willing to call what we call the rapid response team? And 10 of them put their hands up. And so we have one person who led the parade, Mike Waters, and I agreed to, from my banking background to be the liaison with SBA. And what we committed to do is that when someone goes and requests a mentor, and specifically for obviously one of those loans, we committed that they would get a response within 24 hours. Sometimes they got a response in two hours because we knew how much they were hurting. And so we did a round robin, each of us, eventually the group grew to about 15 people. And we just um, answered all their questions, helped them with applications, went through the process. But what we did specifically is that because there was a lot of misinformation and the SBA was changing the rules as we went through it, we did only gave them answers that we got directly from the SBA Department of Treasury. And Paul, tell us about upcoming webinars. Yes, yeah, so we, uh, we do uh, uh, webinars obviously online now. We used to do workshops in person. Someday we'll get back to it. Um, last year we had over 80 um, uh, workshops uh, over the course of the year. And we've got over 15 um, workshops planned for the, for the next couple of months, mm -hmm. which include things like we do a series every year for nonprofits uh, in the Low Country. One of the things that's interesting about the Low Country is how many nonprofits we have. There are over 1,500 of them. And we can, you can find out all about this on your website. Yes, if you go to the website or even the, the easiest for folks that are on Facebook, you go to the Facebook page and it has a, a mm -hmm. constant series updated and upcoming mm -hmm. web, uh, uh, webinars. Karen, how does one go about you know, getting a mentor mm -hmm. and, um, and how do you volunteer? Yeah, I mean, that's easy. You mentioned the website, sclowcountry.score.org, or just go to score.org. It gets you to the same place. To ask uh, for a mentor, there's a, a basically a button that says um, request a mentor. It asks us for some very basic information, your name, um, location. Based on your zip code, you'll then be assigned to one of the 300 chapters. Obviously, if your zip code is here, you get assigned to us. And what we ask is that you put uh, some specific information, like I want financial statements, I'm looking for marketing, I want to start a business, I don't know how to get started. And uh, one of us, of our many 40 mentors, will pick up, obviously, that client assignment and then start working with him. And uh, same thing for a volunteer. We're always looking for volunteers. Um, obviously, not just mentors, but subject matter experts. Uh, we have one person who does nothing but restaurants. We have another person who does uh, QuickBooks. So at the end of the day is that we're looking for all people, you know, whether you have an hour to spare or more than that, you know, obviously we're always looking for someone who could help us, including administrative type things. Well, interesting. Um, how did both of you get involved? And here, uh, ladies first. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I'm originally from New Jersey. I'm a transplant, as obviously most people are here. And so I retired about three years ago, and I knew I was not going to stay home. And there was an article actually in CB2 about SCORE, which I, you know, did some research on and actually got introduced to one of our other mentors at the time. And Paul? Yeah, so I, uh, I worked with a long time ago a friend of mine uh, who is actually the, the co-chair of the uh, um, uh, Columbus, uh, Ohio chapter. And when I uh, mentioned to him that I was retiring, he started hawking on me <laughs> the fact that I had to go find the local SCORE chapter and volunteer. So, to are to be commended. And Karen, explain how the mentors, they tailor the, um, the services to meet the client's needs. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we have a multiple ways. But obviously the start is what the individual put in when they ask for a mentor. So if someone looks for someone with financing background, marketing background, you know, developing a business plan, we all know sort of our own expertise. So we will go out and obviously reach out to obviously that particular person. 
So you get the expertise mm -hmm. from a variety Absolutely. of places. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for coming in on, and advising us of this much needed service mm -hmm. that you provide. You are to be commended for it and much, much success to you both. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much. And, and everyone needs, obviously, a mentor. You know where to find us. And if anyone has a few hours to volunteer, please reach out. And we'd uh, obviously love, love to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's extra for August. I'm Joanne Hines. Please check out the program guide in Sensations for our other Sun City TV monthly shows. And I'm Georgia Lash. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next month as we bring you extra coverage of stories and features from Sun City News.